Hey friends, Ashley with Shen Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a fragrance that no doubt has the cringiest, douchiest advertising of all time. It's like this fragrance is made specifically for rich douche bros. The fragrance, of course, is Philip Pline No Limits. And if you've not seen the advertising for this, go ahead and Google it. Philip Pline No Limits make sure that you use a dollar sign instead of an S because money is cool. Go ahead, you can pause this video, you know, go Google it or after this video is over, go ahead and check it out if you haven't seen it. It is a masterpiece of filmmaking. Basically it's Philip Pline hanging out with a whole bunch of scantily clad women, uh, hanging from a helicopter inside of a supercar that has ropes that are on fire that are tethering the supercar to the helicopter, doing push-ups between Bentleys, you know, stuff like that. I bought this fragrance basically to meme on it. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how this smells. I'll let you know if this is any good or not. We'll also check out the presentation. So let's jump into it and uh, check out No Limits, the fragrance for the loaded. So even though this is advertised as No Limits, the fragrance for the loaded, it's actually not super expensive. Retail, it's about 90 bucks, though they are gonna hit you with shipping charges that bring it up to, I think, 120, and that's for a 90 mil size bottle. As of now, it's at discounters for about $60 for a 50 mil size bottle. Do be aware, though, that the stock on this is always low at discounters and it sells out pretty quick but I've seen it pop up on discounters and sell out and then pop back up and sell out and pop back up like three times now. So even if it sells out, it'll be back before long. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation, like always. Let's start things off with the box here. Now, I both love and loathe the presentation. It is, again, just so douchey, but at the same time, the tackiness is kind of endearing to me. I don't know, it's weird. So you got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, the size, the concentration, all right there on the front. And of course, they gotta hit you with the hologram. Yeah, the hologram. It's a dollar sign and the Philip Pline skull. Nice. You've got the PP logo at the bottom, that Philip Pline PP. <laughs> and then um, around on the back, you have your ingredient information. On the bottom, you're gonna find your batch code. And the box actually, opens up like so, and that's where you'll find your bottle. And here is that glorious bottle. It looks like a credit card. Philip Pline, no limits. And uh, technically, if we wanna be technical, uh, it would appear that there is a limit, in fact. One trillion dollars. <laughs> it's like Dr. Evil or something. One trillion dollars, yeah. So uh, no limits, as long as you don't go over a trillion dollars, which to be fair, would be pretty hard to do. So this bottle is definitely tacky, but like I said, I actually do like it in a, a weird kind of way. You've got the uh, PP logo on top of the atomizer, and then on the bottom, you have a sticker with your batch code. And I'll go ahead and waste some sprays for you guys here so you can check out the atomization, which is actually really good. Solid. If you go onto Fragrantica.com, which in case you're unaware of that for some reason, it's a fragrance database where users can vote on fragrances, you know, whether they love it or like it or dislike it or hate it or whatever. They have not shown a lot of love to No Limits. It's actually one of the most hated fragrances on the entire website. The reason for that is 100% the advertising. And Philip Pline just leans right into it. He does not care whatsoever. You can tell that the advertising, like I said, is completely for rich douche bros. He is unapologetic about it. I've got here the note breakdown from the Philip Pline website, so the official note breakdown. I'm not going to go through all the notes, but he's doing things a little bit different, you could say. Typically, in a note breakdown, you'd have a top, a mid, and a base, right? Sometimes they'll call the top the head notes. Sometimes they'll call the mid the heart notes, but it's still the same idea, top, mid, bass. Philip Pline does not play top, mid, bass. He actually has four categories of notes for this fragrance, and they are as such. High voltage energy, that's, that's the first, so I, I guess that's the top, high voltage energy. 
After that, you have dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, money, which we'll just say is cash, 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 money. So he's got the uh, cash, 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 money notes after the high voltage energy notes. After that, we've got the sex and addiction notes, followed up, of course, with the muscles and power <laughs> notes. Yeah. So he's, he's evolving the game here. No top, no mid, no base, muscles, power, cash, 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 money. That's what I'm talking about. And then he's got the note in here of high tech laser woods, which is kind of the coolest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, high tech laser woods. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Laser woods. So, you know, poking fun at this, yeah, it's pretty easy to do. How does the fragrance itself smell though? Is it bad? Actually, no, it's not. I actually really like the way it smells. I basically bought this just to meme on it because I figured there is no way, there is no way that this is gonna be any good. I mean, the advertising, if you haven't seen it, you will Google that. You, you can't view that and be like, man, that's gotta be good. And then you see this bottle, yeah, I like it in kind of an ironic way, like I'm a hipster or something. It's ugly, but somehow it works. It opens up with this blast of ginger and citrus that is gone so quick. It's just a really quick hit, this little pop. It's taken over by dark chocolate pretty much right away, and leather comes in pretty quickly as well, and that's gonna be one of the main things that you pick up from this fragrance. There's also some vanilla in there. The high-tech laser woods are in actuality amber woods, as best as I can tell. You pick all this up pretty quickly. The fragrance turns into a warm, spicy, leathery fragrance that is really, really addictive. It's pretty bold as far as designer releases go, and it actually reminds me of a couple other fragrances that the perfumer of this one made. So this one is done by Alberto Marias. Uh, most people know him from Aqua de Jo. This though smells a little bit like Gucci Guilty Absolute and Fragrance One Black Tie. Of course, Fragrance One Black Tie, that is Jeremy Fragrance's fragrance brand and one of the fragrances released under that brand. Both of those were done by Alberto Marias. And this smells a little bit like those fragrances. Not the exact same, but definitely in the same style. So it's basically like a trifecta of fragrances that Alberto Marias did centered around kind of a leathery vibe. This is one of those three. No Limits has this really nice kind of effervescent sparkle to it from the opening through into the mid where it gives this kind of cola vibe. So it's like this sweet sort of cola fizziness that jumps off your skin with the black leather underneath it. And it actually smells really, really nice. And drawing again on that comparison between Gucci Guilty Absolute and Black Tie, I would say this is less medicinal, less divisive, less potentially off-putting than Guilty Absolute, and maybe a little bit sweeter than Black Tie, which means a lot of people are gonna find this to be kind of a more wearable version of those scents in a way. This one has a good amount of spiciness, especially from the opening into the mid, and they all blend together really well. So you've got cinnamon in here, you've got cardamom, you've got black pepper, you've got star anise, and you have clove. So a whole bunch of different uh, spicy notes, and they all work together really well. Nothing sticks out like a sore thumb. That black leather also comes out more and more as the fragrance dries down. There's an incense note in here, but you never really get too much smokiness, maybe like a little tiny puff of smoke. That's about it though. Mainly, this centers around that leather. And this one stays centered around that leather all the way through the dry down, a smooth, uh, sweet black leather, and then a little bit of modern woods underneath it. This fragrance ranks right up toward the top of my just most unexpected, mind-blowing blind buys that I've ever had. There have been lots of fragrances that I thought, oh, this is gonna be awesome, and I blind bought it, and then it was awesome. There have been times I thought, you know, I'm gonna really like this, and maybe I didn't like it as much as I thought, but I have never, ever been so sure that a fragrance would be trash to get it in, spray it on, and go, wait, what? What just happened? That's exactly what happened with this. 
first time I sprayed it was on a tester strip and I smelled it and I went, it's, wait, it's good? And then I sprayed it on my skin and I was like, maybe on skin it's not so good. Uh, no, no, it's still good. It is actually really unique as far as designer releases over the past few years. I would say it is better than the vast, vast majority of designer releases over the past few years as well. It is potentially a little bit divisive because it does share that similar leather vibe of the fragrances I mentioned earlier, but to me it's really, really wearable because it has that sweetness to offset everything. And I had my wife smell it, had her friend smell it as well because I thought, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong here and maybe they're gonna smell it and go, no, 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 doesn't do it for me. No, actually, everybody loved it. And my wife picked out the leather immediately and said that it was a great one. So, yeah, proof is in the pudding, I guess, as they say. The advertising makes me legitimately cringe. The presentation is super tacky. The fragrance is really good. Let's talk about performance. Longevity, seven to eight hours for me off skin, no problem there. Uh, projection above average as well. Not what I would consider beast mode, but definitely, definitely good enough to get noticed. One thing to keep in mind though, like I showed you earlier when I sprayed this on, and I'll do it again, the atomizer sprays a really fine mist. So check this out. So you wanna make sure that you get a good amount on your skin. It's one of those fragrances that if you hold it out too far, it's going to atomize all into the air and you're not gonna get a whole bunch on yourself. Then you might think, oh, the performance isn't that great. So just when you spray it on, keep that in mind. In terms of when I would wear this one, more fall and winter time, it's a cool cold weather kind of fragrance. And as far as daytime or nighttime use, more of an evening fragrance, more of a night out, date night kind of scent. Definitely the type of scent to get you noticed and obviously good casually as well. At discounters for 60 bucks, that's what I paid. I think it is absolutely 100% worth it. From the Philip Plan website, you know, 90 bucks plus I believe another 30 in shipping. It's a bit much. Although $120 after shipping is really not that expensive when we're talking retail prices for designers nowadays. I mean, you've got brands like Dolce & Gabbana charging that much, I believe, for K Eau de Parfum. So it's not really that far out of the wheelhouse of what fragrances are going for designer-wise nowadays. Still though, for me, discounters. That's the move. And this does bear repeating. They sell out a lot, but then they come back in stock. So if you have some patience, if it shows sold out, wait a little bit and then pick it up once it comes back in stock. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Philip Plein, no limits, actually good, and more unique than most designer fragrances coming out nowadays. Strangely, somehow, whatever, I don't get it, but okay. <laughs> if you can get past the advertising and the, the kind of douchey aura around the fragrance, it's solid. All right guys, it's gonna do it for me. If you smell this one, let everybody know what you think about it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.